Welcome to Everything Music. If you are curious about how humans have organized sound over time, this is the place for you. From performance to music history to music theory, composition, orchestration, no topic is too small. My name is Craig Cameron. I am your host. because you are in one of my public school music classes or you're fishing around YouTube and accidentally ended up here or you're really bored. Either way, we're about to go on a little video exploration of some of the fun things that's happened in jazz. Basically, this is your second assignment if you're watching this and this is a review of stuff you've learned maybe in sixth grade or seventh grade if you had me for general music appreciation at that point. So over the next few minutes, we're going to talk about those four elements of jazz that we discussed in sixth grade and um, how they applied to music. And then we're going to talk about some of the places where jazz came from and get you ready for this assignment, which is tackling the topic of how does Chicago jazz sound different than New Orleans jazz and why did this happen? All right, so it's been another day since I've last recorded. As you can see, I've changed shirts. So now we're going to move into the things that as a review for stuff that we did when you were either in sixth, maybe seventh grade. Um, so we're going to talk about where jazz came from. Now jazz grew up in a million places, but it was born in New Orleans. And we're going to go back and explore some of the history of that and the, uh, those four elements that we talked about back then. So let's start with that first element. Now hopefully, through the miracle of editing, there'll be some music playing right now and you will not be seeing my face. But in this music, you're going to be listening for three of these elements. The first one is called the backbeat. And that is when people are clapping on the one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So look for that as you watch this video of a New Orleans jazz band playing when the saints go marching in. As they begin to play, listen to the background. The people will be clapping. And if you count, they'll be clapping on the one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now I hope with the power of editing, I'll be able to edit in my voice at some point and help clap along with them. But if not, this is when the saints go marching in in a true New Orleans style. <laughs> our next element of jazz, which is improvisation. Improvisation means just making it up on the spot. Basically right now, I am improvising most of this lesson. I have a general format I'm following, a, a um, set of guidelines, if you will, and I'm just loosely connecting them together. So right now, we're gonna to listen to the same band improvise. We're gonna to listen to the trumpet player play one of his courses, and he's gonna improvise most of everything he plays. Notice that as he plays, he will sometimes drift back into that main idea of when the saints go marching in. But then he'll weave around some other ideas. And then secondly, the, the uh, lady sitting down playing the clarinet, she is going to improvise second, right after him. Notice how she doesn't do that so much. She gets far away from the main idea of the song and improvises a completely new set of ideas. In my opinion, she has much better control of how she improvises. 
she has to rely on the main idea much less than the trumpet player. But either way, both of these musicians are improvising over the same tune when the saints go marching in. <laughs> He played well, but she is really going to play an improvised solo that is much better. Her ability to create completely new musical ideas that are not from the original melody shows she has better control of her ability to musically improvise. <laughs> element is called syncopation. Syncopation is basically a combination of long and short sounds that are constantly done. It's also called swing in the eights and it's what gives jazz its bouncy quality. In the next video segment you'll see me at the piano and I'll be demonstrating syncopated versus unsyncopated sounds. Alright for our third element I'm going to use the piano here mostly in tune to demonstrate the, uh, the third element we're discussing, which is syncopation. Syncopation is a very fancy word, a big long word to describe a constant combination of long and short sounds. So a syncopated rhythm may sound something like this. Long, short, long, short, long, short, long. Now, if we apply this to a series of notes, say I take something simple like this. Which was eight notes up and eight notes down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, eight notes up, eight notes down and I syncopate it. I add this long, short idea. It may sound something like this. Instead of, which is very plain and unsyncopated. Now, if we apply this to say something like a blues tune. Also be syncopated the da, 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 da. long short long short long short long short maybe I apply this to a simple progression constant combinations of long and short. And in short, that is syncopation. The fourth element that we discussed in jazz that gives jazz its unique character, its sound, is called extended harmony. And for this unit, the New Orleans jazz versus Chicago jazz, this is really not an essential element to understand. So as far as just telling you that it was there, I'm not going to describe it any further. <laughs> 